What's up guys, my name is Section from the Deviants, and today we're going to be reacting to Attack on Titan Season 4, Episode 4. Now in the last episode, we dealt with a lot of R Rhyna's past. Now part of me wonders exactly why we are focusing on Reiner's past. Like I get, like looking into Reiner's past gives us a sort of um, backstory of the timeline and why they attacked the the wall the time they did and stuff like that but what i'm wondering is you know why exactly did the creators choose right now to let us in on this information like and then why through the eyes of rhina like part of me wonders like what is the uh the what's the director's idea in this decision like and i i know i could be overthinking this because you know out of the four people who went to paradia uh two of them are you know dead you have Ra reiner and annie is still in the crystallized thing so out of the four uh doing it through reiner's perspective is probably the most likely but i don't know i think i think there's more to it i i think reiner is going to do something and i don't know whether to root for him but in the very end we got aaron aaron talked to falco and Aaron basically gave Falco the whole treatment of like a don't come to school tomorrow. Like Aaron sees that Falco is sort of like him in a way. Like he's caring. He's a good kid. Um, he he doesn't find working for Marley as like an honor. My question is, what exactly is Aaron trying to do in this moment? Is he just trying to gather information? Is he just trying to see like whether or not these people can be saved or if they're all goners and he's just destroyed them all at once and then lastly my question is how did Aaron get there in the first place because he would one he would have to cross the ocean but on what did they did they build a ship did they just take over one of the ships that went to parody and then they sailed somewhere where Marley didn't like see them I don't know I'm interested to see what what Aaron's perspective is and what what he, what is he trying to do so without further ado, let's get straight on to it. Make sure to support the original content as always. All right, let's get going in three, two, one, and go. Falco, could you do me a favor? Sure. What do you need? I want to send a letter. Would you be willing to send it from outside the internment zone? Sure thing. Guess this mm. is to your family? Yeah. Uh, I hope it doesn't get taken away. One hand to another. Put your hand on my shoulder. Mm. Hey, why all the commotion? The Tiber family just arrived. Looks like all of them. Baby. Excuse me. All of them. I'm Willie, head of the Tibers. It's a pleasure. I lead Marley's warrior unit, Commander. Well, he looks like father. It is an honor to make your acquaintance. Allow me to introduce you to my beloved family. <laughs> Can you tell which of us is the Warhammer Titan? No, sir. I've seen no sign at all. Someone among us wields the Warhammer. It's the maid. I came here to lay eyes on the statue of Helos. It captures the moment a century ago when a mere human struck down the devil of all Earth. This is the spirit of Marley. Yes, I agree with you. Especially since the statue is completely hollow. <laughs> I suppose the hope is that by forcing Marley and citizens to risk their own necks in the trenches, then we can eventually put a halt to this nation's self-destructive march toward war. As you just noted, Marley is under the Tiber family's influence. But we did not set Marley on this path of militarism. Theo Magath, I ask you to take my hand and work at my side. These guys are Eldians, right? They're, they're holding so much influence. Good morning, Pac. Sorry if I scared you. Okay. He's winning. Falco just passed Gobby. That's right. <laughs> Look how they celebrate that one win. Dumb kids. What's all the fuss about? Falco finally got the best of Gavi. Really? He beat her grades? No, he just outran her in a race. Sure, but it's still a historic feat. Oh, 
Gobby is pissed. Your brother's inheriting the beast, so you and your family will be made honorary Marleyans no matter what you do! You know that, so why try so hard? Is that the same with you and Rhyna? I'm doing this for you! Or is that not extended bounty? He really just oh. up and said it. You're uh, trying to stop me from getting what I want, but you think you're doing it for me? Yes. That doesn't make any damn sense! What's that jerk's problem? <laughs> hey, tell me! Oh. Are they really gonna declare war from here in the internment zone? Looks like they're building a stage. They say um. the are gonna come from all over the world. Sounds no. like all of Marley's problems are about to magically disappear. You Doubt really it. don't think it'll work? Do you really think it will? We've been at war with too many of these countries. They want Marley to fall. They chose to meet at the internment zone. Maybe they want to help people understand us. No. Gabby. Help prove yourself wrong or we're all screwed. You shape up too. Stop pretending to be a weirdo, Zofia. Um... This is just who I am. And you're doing great. And if you two ever cheer for Falco over me again, I will make you cry. Oh, she's definitely a devil. It's Commander McGath. Allow me to congratulate you. The army is now yours, General. No, sir. It belongs to the nation. And Marley is a nation commanded by none other than you, Lord Tiber. Hmm. This nation isn't mine, though. It belongs to the people, Marleyan and Elvia. Oh, yeah. But I have the wheel. I can see why no one's tried to turn it before. Okay. Maybe it's him. Maybe he's the Warhammer. Thank you for delivering those letters for me. You've been a big help. I wonder who oh, they're sure. to. They can't go to parody. A doctor's coming. Well, I should head out. Yeah. My name's Jaeger. I'm an internment zone physician. I saw you speaking with a boy just now. Is he a friend? Guess so. Hmm. Before the Eldian restorationists were caught, that boy's uncle was a leading member. Marley sends captured restorationists straight to paradise frequently with their families in tow. Why tell me all this? So that you'll stop asking that young man to run errands for you. The Grice family's efforts will have been for nothing if people begin to suspect him of something illicit. The people you love won't always be waiting. If you take them for granted, you will be left with regret. You have regrets about your own family? Better. I'm filled with them, even now. <laughs> oh, fault. he's going it's crazy. All my fault. Oh, talk about a family reunion. But like, who controls Marley? Is like, is it is it just is government? Is there a president? Enough like, idle chit chat. We're gonna serve these people so well that their heads spin. Is there a king? What's what's going on here? <gasps> oh, I, he's dead. I'm terribly sorry, ma'am. My lady, <laughs> is everything all right? This is quite embarrassing. But I spilled wine on my kimono and was just asking this boy for assistance. Why weren't you? There's no telling what they would have done to you if I'd been honest, right? You're so lucky she was nice. Willie! <laughs> if it isn't the heir of our saviors. Ambassador Aguino. <laughs> Long time no see. All these dignitaries. Let me bid you a warm welcome and offer my thanks to you all for the traveling kingpin? so far. Toward that end, please raise your glasses and join me for a toast. Cheers to everlasting peace. Such a refined joke. Oh. It's unfortunate that this isn't a first language for all our guests. Thanks for breaking the ice, Ambassador. All right, Willie. Okay, everyone, everyone likes Willie. You've been invited to join me tomorrow in the Liberio internment zone. It is home to a people whose blood runs through my own veins. Would the world not be better if Titans ceased to exist? Mm. There's but one answer to the Eldian question, and tomorrow night I'll share it in the course of my first ever theatrical production. Now, to the playwrights and the witnesses of history. To the playwrights and the witnesses and now of I, history. Okay, now I was doing it. What the hell? That's right, be late. Be late. 
about time you woke up. Why is everything all crazy? It's for the festival. Different people have been pouring in from outside all morning, and they opened up a bunch of food stalls. Even they're confused. <laughs> He's gonna have flashbacks again. Or not. No, not That's credits. What you get for being a glutton. Feels strange. As if the world is about to change in a big way. I don't yeah. think that's a good thing. Ooh, is he gonna make actually hey, make the announcement? How have you enjoyed the festival? Wait, where's Falco? Oh, he said he saw someone he knew in the crowd and ran off to say hi. Aaron? Uh, Mr. Brown! Where the hell have you been? Sir, do you mind coming with me? Don't think there's time. Oh, uh, gosh. Fine. It's through this door. Oh, I would not do that. Okay. There's a trap waiting to happen. Evening. It's been four years. Oh. Reiner. Aaron. And that, that's where it ends. Oh. Things are getting tense. Okay, so first off who how do I say this Aaron's letter right who is it going to and uh why at first I was like oh yeah obviously he wants to keep in contact with the people of parody and you know that's why he's scouting but it, that doesn't make any sense because the male people are not going to receive a letter that says to the people of parody and then be like oh yeah well, let's just send a boat over and send it to them and Aaron knows that so either He's talking to someone else, whether it be like a Marlian or um, an Eldian who's already in Marley, or he is not the only one that came over from Parody and infiltrated the the ranks. Part of me feels like it's either Mikasa, maybe Armin. I'm not sure because like at first I think Mikasa because we 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 know her. We know the likelihood that she would leave Aaron to go to another country by himself, it, it's not going to happen. Or it also could be Armin because he's kind of the the thinker. He's the plan doer, right? This whole thing could be his plan. So I don't know. Ah, confusing, confusing. And then with Tiber, um, Tybar, Tiber, Tiber, whatever, William, I don't know where I should place him because on one hand, the, the world, Right, it seems like the world absolutely despises Eldians, but the fact that they can turn into these beings that completely decimate countries. But then you have the Tybar family, who it, it seems like everyone looks to them as gods. And I get most, I mean, at least most likely it is that the reason why they have such a high standing with everyone is because their ancestors were the ones that sent the founded titan and all of them to hide into parody but to have such a such a difference in attitude towards the same race but based off the actions it's just it's so different and the way william was talking to the other general dude leader man whatever he is i started to question like okay so who is the leader of Marley. I don't even know who the general of the Marleyan military is. And we've been kind of learning about the military this whole season. So my question is, okay, is is Marley like governed or is Marley ruled by like a government, kind of like parliament? Does Marley have a king? Does Marley have a president? Like who is making these grander decisions? Because as much as Tybar feels as though he rules over Marley, I don't think that's the case. I think he just, like that family has just high influence. And then I have two more things. First off, I am worried about what Will is going to say during the, the speech. Because on one end, I think, okay, he's just going to rally the Marleyans and then rally all the other countries who are there watching him to go or all come together as one and then fight parody i'm about 90 percent sure that's what he's going to be doing in his speech but there's still that 10 percent 
I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the way they made him talk. Maybe it's the way they made him like uh, act. I don't know what it is, but it seems like he is going to do something that maybe the Marlins didn't expect. Share something that they didn't say. I, I don't know. I, just, I feel like there's something more to the speech other than just rallying, rallying them against the people of parody. And then lastly, what exactly is Aaron's goal right now? Because he, at first I thought, okay, he was just doing espionage. He was just gathering information. And the reason why he grew his hair longer and he put his the whole eye patch is to make sure Rhina specifically did not recognize him. Oh, and then, I mean, it could also be for Zeke, but to blatantly meet Rhina Mani, Mano y Mano is weird at best because I get it as a viewer like we've seen exactly what Rhina has been thinking and doing these past several weeks give or take um so we know that he's kind of on the fence of these things but as I try to view from like Aaron's perspective Rhina still seems like a guy who's like gung-ho on destroying the people of parody so I don't, I don't know is Aaron trying to convince him is Aaron trying to make a compromise i don't know aaron the the way aaron's been looking these past couple episodes tells me that he doesn't give a damn like it looks like he's given up on life and he just wants to take the easy way and the easy way is just straight killing everyone but then if that's the case then why exactly is he wanting to talk to rhina i don't know but i'm, I'm guessing it's gonna happen in the next episode and that's the thing like i got other shows that i have to watch and, and yet, this show is making me want to binge watch it. And I can't do that because my camera loves to overheat every hour. So I'll wait. I'll wait. But anyways, uh, that was my reaction to Attack on Titan episode 4 of season 4. If you like my reaction, make sure to like and subscribe. If you guys want to know anything more, put a comment section down below. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.